We mentioned the case of James Boyd in our last segment. He was living on the streets and suffered from schizophrenia when he was shot by Albuquerque police. The attention that case brought to the state could propel lawmakers to consider a version of Kendra's law here in New Mexico. Senate pro tem Mary Kay Papen says she will introduce legislation that would give judges the option of ordering outpatient treatment for individuals with mental illness. Supporters say this will reduce hospitalizations and jail costs. Opponents worry it could violate people's civil liberties, however. And Marisa, you cover public health for KUNM and the arguments for and against. Just kind of give us the for and against uh, 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 briefing uh, to start us off here. Sure. So they're suggesting that uh, in New Mexico, we need mm -hmm. a law that um, will allow court to order folks to participate in treatment or take medications mm -hmm. uh, in the hopes that this will create safer situations for the community and lessen the interactions that those folks maybe mm -hmm. will have with mm -hmm. police officers. And in New Mexico, what they're specifying is that this would only be used in cases where a person was a danger to themselves or to their family members. Let me stop you right, let me stop you right there, because that's the tricky part, isn't it? Mm -hmm. is, is that determination, Tom Garrity, of, of what who determines who's dangerous and who's not? And who has to try to figure that out? Is it the courts? Is it APD? Is it, you see what I mean? It gets yeah. very tricky. And, and that's the ambiguity that Senator Candelaria is uh, concerned about. And I think that that's the one thing that could slow this down uh, in the legislature is there's, mm -hmm. there's not enough specifics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think civil liberties uh, is a major concern of, you know, everybody at this table, obviously. Sure. Um, you know, and Senator Papin stated, you know, quite clearly that we're not going after people with disabilities. We're looking to help people who are in danger to mm -hmm. themselves and to their families mm -hmm. and it's that definition of what danger is and how it will be rectified or remedied that really is raising the question right, right. you know as you know better than anybody here at the table the worst time to make legislation was when people were in a panic about something absolutely <laughs> <laughs> however is it reasonable to put this on the table and have a good debate about this? It seems that we've tried in past legislatures oh, uh, this, to do this. this will not be the first time by yeah. any stretch the last time the really good bills was 2006. Uh, the bills were carried by Joni Gutierrez and also uh, Senator Joe Carrero. Mm -hmm. And the issues still come down to, uh, one, do you take away people's civil liberties? Mm -hmm. But two, does the system support the decision? Mm -hmm. And it does not. And that I know Senator Papin is grappling with. And so let me give you an example. Yes. Um, when the behavioral health programs were changed so significantly last year, mm -hmm. there were individuals who are homeless on the street who had uh, care workers who they were taking medicine from. Well, when you pull the behavioral health workers away from them, people they didn't trust, mm -hmm. now who is helping them, mm -hmm. cajoling them, pleading with them to take their meds? And if they are not in a system where they can enforce it, so what? Mm -hmm. So what? Interesting. And that was the big Please. question that I had about um, in reading about this because I've reported so much on mental health over the last year mm -hmm. is there's largely there's a lot of concern that there's not enough facilities, there's not enough uh, psychiatrists, there's not enough people to uh, prescribe these medications, there's not enough treatment uh -huh. programs. So if court is ordering people to participate in them, but those facilities maybe don't exist, then how does that play out? And I think it's also confusing to bring this issue up in the context of James Boyd, because it's not clear to me that he wasn't taking his medications, and it's not been proven that he was a danger to himself or to other people. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he's being used as kind of a something to hang this conversation on, but I'm not clear that I think it's totally, totally effective. That's an excellent right. point. Right. Yeah. What, uh, the, the idea that we're one of five states that don't do this, however, is the tide turned? Are we going to have to make some kind of move here and just kind of manage it as it goes along? Well, I think overall this is an issue that we need to address. Mm -hmm. I don't know that this is the specific, you know, the, the solution per right. se to this whole thing. Right. To me, I think I see, um, you know, there's a lot of gaps that happened um, in the system that James Boyd and others like him mm -hmm. fall through. Mm -hmm. And um, along the way, there were a lot of opportunities for um, intervention of some sort, and I'm not sure that forced medication is the one that would have prevented something like this. Mm -hmm. I think when you start talking about forced medication, that issue of, you know, where do you draw the line, who is, you know, a danger, and who's going to make that determination, there's already a process if, if a family um, does feel the need to, to have, you know, an involuntary commitment, you can go through the process mm -hmm. of doing that. That's I mean, right. it's a long process, it's very difficult, um, but there's, it's set up that way for a reason. Mm -hmm because um, you know, we don't want to be in a police state where people are just being plucked off the street and forcibly right. um, you know, uh, placed behind bars and medicated sure. and so forth. Sure. And I think that that's the sort of extreme situation um, that scares a lot of people mm -hmm. in this case. Well, and also, not to be too flip about it, going back to you, Tom, 
That does scare people, but so does the, f the idea that there are folks walking right. around there unattended, to be, use a term. Oh, uh, correct. And, you know, it, and, that, and that fear, it seems to me, is now risen a little bit higher than what Laura's uh, quite rightfully talking about. Whether that plays out in the legislature, what do you, what do you think? Well, uh, yeah. just a couple of quick things on that. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, the legislature is going to, you know, I mean, uh, Representative Jones, uh, Arnold Jones, put it perfectly. They're going to do what they're going to do. Right. Um, uh, clarification, though, um, James Boyd was a threat, and I think Rick Nathanson in his uh, series in the Albuquerque Journal did a great job of documenting uh, just the run-ins that uh, James Boyd has had with the law in the past, mm -hmm. uh, to the point of even breaking an officer's nose. So, you know, I think that there is, a, it, it is, good to use him as an example, but he's not the only example. Mm -hmm. uh, there have to be others. But I think the key to this will not necessarily be coming up with a statewide solution because of the issues with behavioral health services. I think it's going to be able to empower local counties and local municipalities to set up their own programs uh, and laws to deal with this, much as the city of Albuquerque tried to do uh, back during the Chavez administration. Right. Uh, the other example is, is let's look to see who's doing a good job at this. And right now, San Antonio uh, and Bear County have really shown that they are able to really pump uh, you know, uh, a lot of resources in. They have a smart approach called the Restoration Center. Mm -hmm. And I know it's something that the city of Albuquerque as well as Bernalillo County have been looking at as a possible option to handle mental health issues. Right. Once again, we're going to finish this segment with you, uh, Representative. It comes down to the families, doesn't it? It really is their word about who is a danger at the end of the day. They're the closest to the situation. Well, it is. And, and in some ways, Kendra's Law would help some of those families. If you are a family member of someone who is pre-schizophrenic, and these are usually males between 18 and 25, you can beg people for help, and there is no help. Right. And, and right. so the other side of Kendra's Law is there may be help to prevent, but then the civil liberty side is, is can you force people to take antipsychotic drugs that have tremendous side effects if all of a sudden you drop out from taking them? Right. Interesting point there. Up next, I speak with outgoing treasurer James B. Lewis about his career and the future of New Mexico.